Welcome back to the Bernard Lee Poker Show. I am absolutely thrilled this week to be presenting these two gentlemen. They have been together for 18 years, Poker Hall of Fame nominees and very good friends of the show. You know them. You've seen them every year on ESPN. But this year, they're moving over to CBS Sports Network for the WSOP. These gentlemen are synonymous with the WSOP main event since 2003 and the moneymaker boom, especially with that iconic phrase said by Norman Chad. This is beyond fairy tale. This is inconceivable. Welcome to the show, Norman Chad and Lon McCarran. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us here on the Bernard Lee Poker Show. Happy to be here, Bernard. You said that line better than Norman did, I think, originally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> <laughs> we are, uh, th like I said, thrilled to have you guys here. It's been a long time since I've seen you, obviously, with uh, the way the world has been for the last couple of years. Um, Norman, I want to ask you first, how are you in, in all seriousness uh, with regards to your recovery of uh, COVID? Uh, well, I had COVID a little more than a year ago, and unfortunately, I, I got the long haul COVID afterwards, which is quite common. Uh, I haven't had it as badly as other people, it's just been extreme fatigue and brain fog, uh, and it comes and it goes. It's gotten a little better the last couple of months, but it, when it hits, whether either one or the other, like you can't get out of bed for two or three days, or you can't really think with the brain fog. Uh, so when I, you know, if I can't really think, that puts me more in line with Lon. So I think we have a better relationship. Uh, so I don't mind the brain fog that much. He's so feeling better, as footing? you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, equal footing. Thank you. Well, you know, you guys have been, I mean, I, I think people don't realize it sometimes. You guys have been together since 2003, the moneymaker boom. Um, 18 years. Last year, you guys were nominated for the Poker Hall of Fame. Um, first, before we get into your careers, Poker Hall of Fame, what an incredible uh, accomplishment to be nominated uh, and, and really what an honor. What did you guys think when you heard? Well, since we're in charge of the nominations, it wasn't that much of a surprise. Um, but no. I'll, send you, I'll send you my check later then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fine. No, it was thrilling. I mean, yeah, to be recognized by the people uh, whom you report on and work with and all like that. Uh, it's thrilling and, and uh, it's, you know, like I say, being nominated is an honor in itself. And it really was, you know, I, nobody expected us to get in. Uh, so uh, I, it, it's very nice, very gratifying, actually. Yeah, I, I had never, I, I'd been a Poker Hall of Fame voter. So I actually never, I never thought about actually that we would, would be, could be in the Poker Hall of Fame. That just didn't really cross my mind. Uh, and now I know it's not going to happen because, I mean, every team is only as strong as its weakest link. So oh, uh, that's that's true. That's yeah. true. If, if, I'm, if I'm linked to Lon, I really have no shot. So I really appreciate the nomination. And uh, we both you know, know this is as far as we can go. Well, we're, we're, we're just basing it on the 2002 World Series. So you have nothing to worry about, OK? Because I did that, of course, with my good friend, Gabe Kaplan. <laughs> yeah, go. he, he, he did the World Series starting one year before me with his good friend, Gabe Kaplan. So uh, now, uh, yeah, let, let's see if that 2002 World Series gets you into the World Series. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are talking about how you guys got started in the World Series. And let's talk about it. Norm just alluded to it. Lon, you started in 2002 with uh, Gabe Kaplan. That was the year that Robert Varconi won. But how did you kind of get into this world of uh, the World Series? How were you contacted and uh, how did you get involved? It was um, a regular gig. I was a regular play-by-play -play announcer for ESPN on a freelance basis. Um, I used to have a sports production company and I would produce shows. That's how I got on ESPN the first time. I knew nobody was going to hire me there. Uh, but so I, I became an outside packager and hired myself to do the on-air work and got on ESPN. So that showed them. Uh, but yeah, it was just another gig. You know, just another poker gig. Yeah, I'll do a poker gig. And uh, ended up getting called because a producer I worked with knew the producer of the O2 show. And that's how it always worked back then. You know, I became a trusted entity. And uh, obviously nobody else in the Bristol offices wanted to do poker. Why right. would they? 
And right. uh, so when 03 came around, uh, I was the last guy that did, you know, a poker show. And that's how it worked. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's the right you've place, also, right time. You, you've also done other play by play stuff. You did some in the bowling uh, world too, right? I did the year of PBA. I mean, I was a, uh, I did the first four or five X games, both summer and, and winter. So I, I was becoming a, an entity, uh, you know, covered the entire Tour de France World Cup skiing for ESPN and did 150 billiard shows. So again, I was a known entity. Um, right. And so, it, you know, for some reason, they, they trusted me not to screw it up too badly. Norm, how about you? I mean, uh, this was not, uh, you weren't there in 2002, like you said. Uh, but obviously you came on in 2003 and, and said that iconic line that I mentioned earlier. How did they give you a call? Yeah, for me, it was more unusual. It was almost like a piano falling out of the sky. You know, it didn't crush me because it was just a complete accident, almost a complete accident. Uh, I was a sports columnist at the time, as I still am. Uh, I was doing some work for ESPN, uh, but mostly as a consultant. Uh, uh, so actually, when they were decided they were going to do more poker shows, they asked me to uh, consult with the production company that was going to be doing it because they had no poker experience. The guy who hired me mistakenly thought I was more of a poker player. I really wasn't. I'd never played No Limit Hold'em in my life. I was just a, right. a weekend poker player. So I consulted with them uh, for several months, uh, 441 Productions, who ended up doing it at first. Uh, the funny thing, I don't even know if I was tell Lon this, they sent me three or four of the poker shows that they had done the previous 10 years to just to make some notes on it. One was like the Jack Binion Open. <laughs> uh, one was a U.S. Poker Championship. And one was uh, the, the, the Varconi year. And huh. I gave notes. I wish I still had the notes. I, I don't even think I commented on Lon, but I know <laughs> I did comment on his good friend Gabe Kaplan because I did tell them that you know they had the perfect guy but he was mailing it in. I just told him, you've got a guy who's a world-class entertainer and he's a good right. poker player and he's really not, eh, he's got a couple of eights there now. He's, you know, looks like a good hand. Uh, I mean, it just, it just like, it didn't look like he was working real hard. I said, but you right. got, that's the right guy. You got the right approach because it should be more entertaining. So I do remember I said that. I don't remember if, if I said, he, you know, he's matched with a hack play-by-play -play guy that you should get rid of. <laughs> but anyway, so after several months of consulting with them, they called me up and said, would you be interested in doing poker? the poker commentary, I had no idea that question was coming. And they said, we're not gonna hire a regular guy for several reasons. We're not gonna hire a Phil Helmuth type of guy. Right. And so let me think about it. Uh, they, they said, yeah, you, you know, we'd like you to do it because you just make us laugh during the conference calls. So I thought about it for a week and I thought it was a one-off. And uh, I said, yes. And then, you know, we, that, we, we went from there. Yeah, I remember the very first time we did it on camera, uh, it was right after Moneymaker 1, literally right after Moneymaker 1. So we're working at 2 or 3 in the morning doing our on-camera work. And the producers wanted me to say, Hi, I'm Lon McCarron, along with tournament poker player Norman Chad. And Norman, being a stickler for facts, uh, he's like, well, wait, wait a minute. This doesn't sound quite right. <laughs> right. And the producer talked us into it, I think, right, Norman? Uh, yeah, I was like, I'm not you a, played a yeah. tournament, right? So you're a tournament, said, you're a tournament player. <laughs> I wasn't a tournament player. He said, have you ever played in a tournament? I played in one or two. I said, yeah, I've played in one or two. Well, you're a tournament player. <laughs> 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 Instant credibility. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Uh, so so in, in that 2003 you were you guys there watching? Oh, you know, Norman's in the show. Norman's in a lot of the shows in the background watching from the bleachers. Yes, we were there. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. And I know that you guys have always talked about it with me. I have to get out of the shot because I can't be in the in the shot in the background. Yeah, Norman was. Uh, I know that they, they left you, right? They left you in, right? They left me in. Actually, they didn't see me in one of them. And they decided to leave me on the other one where I'm in the first row just watching the, the TV table. And I didn't know I was in the camera shot because I had no TV experience. So I didn't know I wasn't supposed to be there. That's yeah, funny. and I've been, I came in a little later because I actually had a real job um, that I had to get away from to come out there. So I came a little later and tell you how much I knew about poker at the time. I had heard about a guy named Phil Helmuth and I heard he was tall and I was standing next to a guy it was tall. He was a poker player. Somebody called him Phil and I introduced myself and it was Phil Gordon, unfortunately. So I... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, 
Um, let's talk Not about unfortunately poker. for Phil. Phil. Phil Gordon's a very nice guy. Obviously. Right, 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 right. Well, let's talk about poker with regards to both of you and how you play poker. Norm, you talked about uh, tournament poker and no limit. You don't really, uh, you know, I don't know if many people know this, but No Limit is not really the game of your choice. The game of your choice is more of the, the mixed games like Omaha, Seven Card Stud, High Low. And again, other people don't realize this. You final tabled in 2012. Uh, you have gotten very deep final two tables in a couple of events one very recently, uh, an online event, Omaha Eight or Better. Uh, it was a six max, so it was final three tables. Seven card stud, the 10K event back in 2014. Uh, 2011 was a $1,500 seven card stud high low event. That was very exciting as well because you and Mike Sexton got oh, down. You're making to the him sound like Tiger freaking Woods. Uh, okay, there you go, on. right? Yeah, you're, you're the uh, the Mickelson, right? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> uh, but but you you enjoy the the mixed games, right? Yeah, and thank you for actually. I know a lot interrupted you, but thank you for going over the credentials. Just coincidentally, I, I make because my you're wife a tournament. You're a tournament player, <laughs> poker player. <laughs> I make my wife. Tony recite all of those before we have uh, <laughs> intimate relations every several months. It's just a mood. But yeah, I uh, I am not a tournament player. Uh, I hardly play any tournaments outside the World Series of Poker, and I play three or four a year. And I've never I've never played No Limit Hold'em, which I, I don't make any bones about. If you hear me talk about No Limit Hold'em, you'll know I never played No Limit Hold'em. Uh, I do love the other games. I'm a better than average player in the other games. Uh, in cash, in tournaments, I'm not so good. I don't play that many. But I love playing the other games, and I'm a big proponent that the other games should be promoted more, and that would be that would be great for the growth of poker. Uh, and and you know, way back when they used to do a lot of those broadcasts. I remember the uh, Chad. I still remember the Chad Brown episode with seven card stud, the, uh, the deuce to seven Barry Greenstein winning. There are a lot of uh, mixed game episodes way back when, right? Early on, uh, yeah, we decided after the success the first couple of years that we would show other bracelet events and show stud and show deuce to seven, show Raz, you know, and uh, and they stopped doing that. And it wasn't really because of ratings. People think, oh, nobody's going to watch, you know, PLO or something. Uh, it was just a cost thing. I mean, we used to do circuit events too. And so they decided, you know, well, why do, you know, why pay to have the production to come into all this? We'll just expand the amount of days that we show the main event. And it was a big right. cost savings. Plus the main event obviously would rate higher than other events. And there is a mystery episode uh, of Raz that we did uh, back. I mean, poker was so big back then that they, they put our 2003 and 2004 <laughs> shows on DVDs for, for sale, technically. I don't know if it ever happened. Um, and we did a Raz show, I think it was 04, that never aired because they oh, wow. had already made that decision not not to air it or something like that. But it ended up on the DVD. So you can look for really? that mystery episode. Yeah, and you want right. to find that because that ended up heads up TJ Cloutier against Dutch Boyd. Oh, right. Yeah. Talking about, you know, meeting of the cultures and different generations. Right, right. At that it's time. Exactly. Fun to watch it if you could ever find it. So it's, yeah, yeah it's Raz. I love Four it. Race on ESPN. And last time I was at Binion's, they were both at the front door asking me for a hundred bucks as I walked in. <laughs> <laughs> Lon, you're a little bit different, right? Uh, you are more of a, a Hold'em player and Thank you. have done very well yourself in a lot of the circuit, WSOP circuit events. I know back in 2013, you, you finished fourth and have final tabled a, a couple of them, right? That's all I get. One mention, one mention of one event. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you're mentioning your, your little your circuit stuff. Yeah, that was good. No, the circuit got <laughs> three circuit final tables um, in Aruba. Uh, the last time they held the circuit in Aruba, yeah, right? Two, two, two final tables back to back in the evening, and just missed a third, uh, and got to go to Aruba. So yeah, That's there right. was a win, 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 win. <laughs> so, um, and, and I know that you play a lot. You're in uh, the Sacramento area, right? And, and play a Correct. lot of yeah. Stone, Stones good, good Gambling corporate. Casino, right? Good. Thunder Valley's there as well. Uh, a couple right. other casinos have opened. Um, another one's going to, uh, Harrah's property is going to open uh, again soon. Strong poker environment uh, out there in uh, in the Sacramento area. So yeah, I get out and I, I, I play when I can. Um, and uh, it just, it helped me, you know, understand the game, help me learn what's going on. Uh, but as you know, the guys today, 
Um, it's it's a, almost a 24 seven study habit right. you have to have to stay up with uh, right. all the guys. And I'm that's not my goal. My goal is to go and have fun and say hi to people and, and you know, win a little money here and there. And, and um, I've been able to do all of those things, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk, both of you have been very kind to come to a bunch of my charity events over the years. We've, I've, we've had it for the One Step Closer Foundation, and you guys have uh, been so kind to come to our events and uh, be one of the celebrities. Uh, but I want to highlight something that Norman's doing this year at the 2021 World Series. Uh, he is planning on playing in the $25,000 horse tournament, which is Woo! kicking off right away. It's the first day of the 2021 World Series. And you are looking at people uh, staking to help uh, contrib contribute to the charity, which will be for Hope for Depression Research Foundation charity. $100 toward the staking and $50 toward the charity. Uh, Norm, talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, I would never, I would, I would never play in a 25K to begin with uh, in a normal circumstance. Uh, I've played in 10K stud eights where I'm, I'm backed by my friends for half to two thirds. So I've never, you know, I've never put up that type of money. Uh, this is a first time event for the 25K. It is, is, it might not have it again. They're kicking off the World Series with it at the end of September. So I decided that it would be kind of cool to, to plan it, have a bunch of people stake me and uh, then raise charity. So with the markup of 1.5 that you mentioned, the 0.5 markup goes to Hope for Depression uh, Research Foundation. I've you know had severe depression, clinical depression for most of my adult life. Uh, it, the depression has come more into the forefront, uh, thankfully the last few years where people talk about it more and realize that it's a serious uh, health issue. Uh, so I, I, I'd like to carry some water for that. And so, yeah, it's, it'll be fun. So a bunch of people get to sweat me for something that otherwise I wouldn't play. I'm playing against the best players in the world since this is going to be the 25 K horse. It's a lot different than the 1500 horse. And then the, if, with uh, the 0.5, the charity gets automatic 12,500 without me having to cash or anything. Uh, and everyone else can hopefully get money back on their hundred dollars or more investment. They don't have best, you know, they don't have a great chance. Statistically it's 15%. Realistically, it's closer to three to 5%. Uh, but yeah, no matter what I do, everybody gets a sweat and uh, the Hope for Depression Foundation, uh, Research Foundation, if you go to statekings.com, they'll get uh, you know $50 a shot and 12,500 altogether. So if you go to statekings.com uh, and they search for your name and then- Yeah, they, it, just look for my name and you, you put it in there. And you know, Lon, Lon McCarran, for instance, is one of the people staking me. Uh, he's got a lot of loose change lately. So he says, <laughs> yeah, 150 bucks, uh, that's nothing. You know, uh, I'll pick that up at Stones or Thunder Valley next week. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I have a question for Norman. Norman, uh, when you play, and I'm sorry, Bernard, can I jump no, in? No, don't be question? sorry. No. Don't be sorry. I love it. Um, I've noticed this. What If I'm going to play a higher buy-in, I feel a little more comfortable because I, do, do you see more predictability maybe and the quality of players when the buy-in's higher can you you know what more to expect from them and can play back at them in certain ways does that, does that I mean, it's always the same thing where you're when you're playing against better players uh they are more predictable uh when you're playing against people who hardly play the game you know or, or just very loose aggressive players or bad players you, it's hard to know where they are in hand so particularly in, in horse you will, when we play 1500 horse you'll have people just float into the 1500 horse who ever have ever played you know, right. Rad or Stud or Stutter 8 or, or any or Omaha, they just know no limit hold. So, and this is limit hold them, by the way. So, they don't even have that big of an advantage. They wouldn't know limit. So, yeah, you have a lot more mediocre play there, but you don't have no idea what they're doing. When you're playing against the best players in the world, you generally can predict the spots better, but they're always going to be better than you. They always, you know, they, they just know when to put an extra bet. They know when to do this. They know when to do that. You know, there's no way that on any consistent basis, I'm going to beat, you know, a David Baker, a Daniel Ogranu, and just down the line. But yeah, you, you, you know, it's just why it's the whole thing. It's the whole thing is you can't bluff a guy who never holds a hand. So it's hard to, you know, when you're playing against the best players, you can bluff them off of hands because they, this, this, they know this, they know that, they know this, but you can't bluff bad players. So it's, you just don't know what they're doing. By the way, they don't think they can bluff me because I'm a bad player relative yeah. to the good players. So it's, it, it all comes with, it. yeah. Well, definitely go to uh, stakekings.com. Uh, um, and search Norman. I will do that right afterward. I will make sure that I will definitely 
uh, contribute to your uh, cause. I love the cause. And, and I think that it'd be great uh, to see you cash, not only just for the charity, but for us too. Me and Lon yeah. need, need some, some dinner money. Oh, so that yeah. would be my favorite cash ever. If I could cash in this, it's just, a, it's a long shot, but having a hundred, 200 backers, it would be so much fun to cash. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk with these two gentlemen about the, the past two decades, really from 2003 all the way up until now, their top moments, uh, the top storylines, and really just about the WSOP and what to expect this year when we return as we continue the 14th anniversary celebration of the Bernard Lee Poker Show. <laughs> 